All right, well, welcome back, viewers, on another edition of uh, Heads Up, and welcome back, Goat. Good to have you back on again. I know we had a bit of a siesta last week, but uh, actually, during that siesta, I, I thought, gee, I'd better, better text you and say, have you got anything for uh, the sports fans out there to, to follow on the weekend? And I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm glad I did, because uh, you nailed two really easy, in the end, good bets. Hawks Bay? Well, I don't know. Yeah, Hawks Bay, uh, both of them, you had their moments, I have to say. Uh, yeah. Hawks Bay took a while to get their dominance uh, over Manawa too, but yeah, they ran away with it. And then the Melbourne Storm, you'd be uh, laughing at half time. Uh, all the rub of the green admittedly went their way, but yeah, I wouldn't want to be a chair in the coaching box. Uh, got a, got a <laughs> oh, fair beating with uh, Mr. Bellamy giving it a good old whack, but uh, no, they, they held on. They fell in to win so that was that was good uh pleasing and i think a few of the subscribers got a dollar or two yeah of the multi and uh coupled with the horses too and myself and credit so thanks very much for that that was a, a good weekend good way to finish off the weekend so well done but um anyway we had a bit of a break last week so let's go back to Hawks bay now you were there and uh what was the crowd like a very good crowd yeah it was a sellout um yeah. they're in good oh, spirits there was plenty of um festivities going on down on that lawn um yeah. plenty of hot punting action uh, going on in the punt of the year room and other rooms i think the on-course turnover was well up on last year so that was a pleasing result for the club uh but the star of the show and a dozen group ones to her name now melody bell what a horse just what is it is it seven seven group ones at hawks bay now for seven wins yeah. seven starts at hawks bay all group one races won them all that's amazing feat. And she just finds a way to win, goes through a flat spot uh, in some of her races. But, gee, she's always strong that last couple of hundred. And it was a pretty easy watch, the um, the last two or 300 metres, Neil. And yeah. Troy Harris saluted on the line. And I think we were quite happy with that, just quietly. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, actually, like you say, she had a bit of a flat spot and just after the 600 metre mark. And I thought, oh, gee. What's going on here? But once she got out wide, clear air, and leaned up 300 metres to go, there was no way she was going to get beaten from there. And um, uh, those who had a good punt on her were very, very happy. And the punt, you touched on the punters challenge before. Too, how many teams into that, roughly? Uh, 150 teams entered, Neil. Yes. And it was the 150th team to enter that ended up winning it, would you believe? group of guys from Wellington yeah. had a team in on the morning. They decided to enter a second team. Their first team, they went all in on race one with Ripcord, Opie Bosson. That failed. So uh, luckily they had their second team or else it would have been a pretty um, boring day in the room when you're out after race one. But they battled their way through <laughs> uh, with that second entry to have enough to have two and a half thousand to win on swords drawn in the last race. And OP delivered for them then, and that ten thousand seven hundred and odd dollar collect was enough for them to win the punter of the year. So, uh, well done to those lads. I'm sure they'll be still celebrating just quietly. Yeah, no, got on them. It was an inspired ride by OP too. Sticking to the fence, they went crazy up front, and he knew they were going a bit crazy. Stuck on the fence, and just too good. So that have been really happy. And last week we had. Um, Horse that didn't set such a fast pace. Need I never say Same. more? Yeah, never he's, say more. yeah, he's uh, becoming a Tirapa specialist, isn't he? Just dominating from yeah. the front. Mm. Uh, yeah, hey, good, good win. Sixteen hundred at Rickerton. Mm, maybe won't be quite so easy for him. I wouldn't have thought, but it has to be a chance. Softly. You looking for? You looking forward to the uh, Rickerton features, Neil? Have you got a sneaky? Perhaps in one of those um, futures markets, the thousand guineas or the cup or the Copelands or the two thousand, a horse that you think might be a winning chance. What are we? A week and a bit out from the first yeah. day, and two weeks out from the yeah. last day. No, I definitely think Tokerang is the a really good bet in the thousand guineas, even this far at eight dollars. She she would have won last week if she'd got out earlier, and uh, I think it was the fastest last two hundred metres all day she ran. So. Up to a mile is going to suit her perfectly. Give her a decent draw. Um, I just can't see the value in Tinker McPhee. Still, if we played this take back in a couple of weeks, I'd probably be proven wrong. But I think Tokerangi's $8 is worth snapping up now. And maybe in the 
in the cup, um, Lincoln King, he's not nominated at this stage, but uh, he's just warned to, he was bred to, and warned to see out two miles the way he raises. So I think at $8, he's worth having in, in vain glory during the sectionals last week. It was an outstanding run uh, to get up for a third or fourth from a long, long way back. And uh, that two miles will suit that as well. How about yourself? Anything? Um, I like one in the Copeland's Mile, actually. Vigor oh, winner. Yeah, yeah big yeah. nice three kilos better off than uh, when they last met at Hastings. Hastings, yeah. Uh, ran second in the race last year. I think it'll come in with a nice weight. It's in good form. Yeah, only five dollars though, but I think it's 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 a solid bet. Maybe wait till the day uh, to back Vigor winner. Yeah. But, I remember that uh, race. Yeah, that race last year, the Copeland's Mile. It was back in heavily, wasn't it? Late Vigor winner. It was, yeah, about 12s into 6s. It was yeah. starting to uh, cause a little concern for those of us who were part of a uh, 10,000 each way bet on uh, the winner, true enough. But uh, luckily, uh, Matt Cameron knew what he was doing and got true enough up on the line. But figure winner was a clear second uh, yeah. that day. So a year older, um, I think, could be hard to beat. But, yeah, I'd have to say, Neil... I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to New Zealand Cup Week at Rickerton and Addington far more than I am the upcoming week at Flemington. I don't know, just without the crowds, no one's going over that we know. It just doesn't feel the same, does it, this whole Melbourne Cup Carnival? No, it doesn't. I just, just with the whole lead-up over the last few months in Melbourne, with no, no crowds there. All you do is get the, the jockey and train interviews before and after, which is quite good. Yeah, without having that crowd atmosphere, you really do miss that. And I think the Melbourne Cup is all about the crowd and the colour and the noise. So, um, yeah, I'm still having a look at the Melbourne Cup, but that's about the only race I'll have a good look at. No, well, we'll look out on Tuesday morning for your uh, preview of the Cup. You might have to get your brother along. He, he always rates himself at picking uh, Melbourne Cup winners, doesn't he? Yeah, I know. He's pretty keen on a couple there, so... It's his camp on a couple I like too, but I've got four or five there and, and he's got a couple too. So you don't know until uh, the morning and with draws and everything and track conditions. There is fine weather forecast for Monday, Tuesday, so it should be a decent track. Well, before we get on to the Melbourne Cup, let's focus on a race that holds almost as much prestige, the Fielding Gold Cup. Run mm. Saturday, Awapuni 4.30, race eight on their card. And London Banker, the Cambridge visitors, come up the $3 favourite. Quite a dominant favourite, actually. Or Gorbachev, five fifty, Red Sierra, nine fifty. But uh, Danielle Johnson, she's riding very well. The James Wellwood combination uh, starting to hit form as well. You're in uh, London Banker's camp, or you're <coughs> looking outside the square a bit? If she was paying 6 or $7, I probably would. But at $3.10, leave me out because... The book has had to open her around about that price, mainly because of the Danielle Johnson factor and the weight. And uh, it's two good runs, but um, there's a horse on there. I'm just trying to bring it up. It might go slow, but uh, high on the key that I thought was um, a good chance to lead or sit second outer and be a decent each way chance at double figure odds. So. Hi, I'm Nikita. Tony Allen's on again and uh, got a first time last start. And Har was a hard track to lead all the way on. And it's like that. So um, I thought that was a pretty good run. So I'm going Hi, I'm Nikita. What are you keen on? Oh, I'll go a bit outside the square as well. I think down the bottom of the handicaps is the way to go. So another horse that's uh, on the minimum, Lou Bayer. I think this mare now, she's always shown a bit of ability, you always got to good finishing burst on her has often resulted in being unlucky running on for fifth and sixth in her earlier career. But that type of horse that frustrates you, but gets you for the next time. And I thought the run at Hastings was good in the last race. Uh, and yeah, I see the track work's been pretty pleasing during the week. So again, a bit of value, but you might have to put your hand up, Neil, because I'm still looking for a jockey. Yeah, I see that. I could kind of crack the right between now and tomorrow, but uh, no chance. You think you could get down to 53? <laughs> a couple of legs off, I'd be right. Um, <laughs> no, I think you're right, too. No no rider, which is unusual. Now, it doesn't 
And the important thing is the race after. We're all waiting for bated breath to get the inside word. We got the inside word for Gitter last time. Only paid, oh. we thought $4 was crap value, but it ended up being good value. And she won and paid $3. But give us the well, info on Gerda, will you? Well, the step up in class is uh, it's yes. a big step. Well, it is a step up in class, and it's a pretty... It's a field with a bit of depth, as evidenced by the uh, bookies' prices. You've got a $5.50 favourite in Aracena. Yeah. Uh, she's trained on very well, hasn't missed a beat. Working well, very happy horse. Track conditions should suit. Uh, three kilo claim. Can't see why she wouldn't be in it. It's doing a bit of sectional comparison, though, Neil. Mm -hmm. Number 16, you are a star. Ran faster, 6'4 and 200. Then Gerda at Hara over a 1,600 metre distance as opposed to Gerda over 14. So that suggests that horse is going to be hard to beat. You are a star. But I'm staying loyal. I think Gerda will be right in the mix. But, um, yeah, good race to finish the day at Awapuni there on Saturday. Okay, right. No, I'll be on it. I thought it was um, – you couldn't have won any more impressively there. So, And I like you say, that 3 kgs off against reasonable opposition. Um Going to be an each way chance. Yep. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. let's, fingers crossed anyway. Yeah, one one yeah. other race we should touch on tomorrow, Neil, uh, you might have an opinion on is the Golden Eagle, Sydney. Uh, you got any thoughts on that race? Yeah, I have. It's a, it was a good race, and it's going to be a heavy track there, or slow to heavy track in our, our terms. And Ice Bath, we were on that last week, and it ran really well on a similar sort of service, just handled it no trouble. And uh, it's right at its peak. And I, th I think at uh, double figure odds, it's got to be an each way. But I thought at $13 or $14, good each way. I think. Anyway, now we missed out last week's question because we weren't here, obviously. But um, the question for viewers was what was the last horse to win the Spring Classic or the Livermore as we know it uh, two years in a row? Correct. And again, we, we predicted the question, uh, Melody Bell uh, saluted as we thought. <laughs> so the answer, when we asked the question, wasn't Melody Bell because she hadn't done it then, but she is the answer now. But the answer we were looking for was Princess Cope. Yep. I think seven people were smart enough to submit that answer. Give me a number between one and seven. We'll go the stripe rug, number two. Number two. Phil. Good on you, Phil. Yep. I think he's a new subscriber, so um, he'll be happy. So we'll get your bet out um, maybe tonight. And um, depending on what the goat picks for the for his best, best sports selection. So, um, what have you got to you for your best sports selection? Well, let's let's do a question for next week. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, simple question. Most people should know this. Uh, who won last year's Golden Eagle? So who won last year's Golden Eagle. If you can recall that, text or email the answer through to Neil by Tuesday night. And hopefully you're winning next week's multi. Yep. Um, 0273526402, I think. And or formpro at formpro.co.nz yeah, by Tuesday night. And uh, you'll be in that draw for that multi for next week. And well, we'll Neil, week. Yep. can you see... Can you see that little logo there? That's the Hawks Bay Rugby Union logo, and they looked after us last week. But this week, we're turning on them. Yeah, we're turning into a turncoat. We're I tipping want against. Back. We're tipping against Hawks Bay in the Mitre Ten Cup clash against Bay of Plenty Sunday afternoon, two o'clock kickoff two at the okay. Tauranga Domain. Uh, Bay of Plenty, pretty impressive against Canterbury, but gee, you wouldn't want to be the Canterbury lineout. Uh, coach or involved in that that's probably the worst line out display I've ever seen from a first class side in New Zealand but by a plenty of a team of confidence and their backs are certainly playing with a lot of confidence attacking from all parts of the field so I think Hawks Bay uh, I don't know if they'll be naming the absolute strongest side and the Shields surely is their number one priority they've got a big game against Wellington next week they win that. They lock the shield up for the summer. So I just think having to travel, Bay of Plenty, in form, minus five and a half on a sunny Sunday afternoon at Tauranga at $1.92. Get on Bay of Plenty to cover that five and a half point start. Uh, 
we won't tip the All Blacks or against them. We learned we got burnt there two weeks ago. So, um, yeah, they should win. The Aussie have named a pretty uh, inexperienced lineup, but we'll stick with the um, the Mitre 10 Cup for this week's sports bet. Bay are plenty minus five and a half, Neil. Right, yeah, that sounds good. And I'll monitor that into my bet of the day, which I'm pretty keen on too, which I'll play later on this afternoon. On, this is Friday afternoon, so um, I'll do that. Uh, what do you think of that, that new fella, Clark, on the All Blacks? What's his first name? Caleb Clark. Caleb Clark, yeah. Uh, I think he's a top man, actually. I think he's well grounded, well brought up by his parents. Um, yeah. He's a humble man. He's a team man. I think he's got a bright future, and obviously he's got a lot of skills and ability mm. to uh, suggest he's going to, um, yeah, make us quite a big impact on the game. Mm. Oh, that's great. No, he was entertaining to watch and uh, excitement the machine, wasn't he? On um, two weeks oh, yeah. ago, just brilliant, great to watch. What we need, eh? Yeah. For sure. Right, the Brick Bats and both. Oh, no, I will touch on. Um, I've done that. Um, uh, Brick Bats and bouquets. Yeah, um, you've got a bouquet for your former favourite politician. <laughs> yeah, Winston. Good on you, Winston. He's having a little <laughs> retirement uh, test now. So, no, bringing in the all weather track at Cambridge. They put up a video of the horses there and the comments from Tony Pike and riders sounds really, really positive. Horses are getting confidence on the track and uh, can be used often. The amount of rain won't hurt. So, I might take a little ticky tour over there next two or three weeks and, and just have a look because I'll have to do the sectionals there. I'll be racing over odd distances, so I'll need markers at certain places for those. But, and it's a nice setting too with all the trees and everything. So when the races start up there next year, it's going to be an interesting place to go do for it. Yep. No. Uh, well done. So yeah. all, the, all the reports are very positive at this stage. Yeah. Um, yeah. A, maybe a, we'll call it a brick bat. You weren't impressed with a ride from last Saturday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, wasn't impressed at all. I thought he's in the perfect business. We're talking about Marine last week. Um, Kavis Chowdhury, normally he rides pretty well, but it was a classic case of not doing your homework properly. It, the leader, Eunition, if you'd seen its last start, ran well off the rail, was always going to run out from the leading position. If Marine had stuck to the rail, and Marine tends to run in like he did in that race on Saturday, he would have just stuck in the role, would have been really happy against the role, and he would, he would have bolted in by two or three lengths, I reckon. The, 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 the winner just wore them down as those two were going hammers and times down the straight. So, anyway, that's a decent brick bat for the virtual one. I hope you got that off your chest now, Neil. I have now. So I feel you feel better? Feel better? Yes. Good. I do feel better. Yes. Good counselling session. Yeah, How well. charge for that? <laughs> uh, yeah, just lay on the couch and we'll look after you. <laughs> Now, I'll probably need the couch after our next uh, little segment here. You've got some questions for me, I believe. Oh, yes. Yep. Stump the goat. We've got uh, five questions here. All based around the Melbourne Cup, too. So that's the thing for next week. So, okay, here we are. Okay, first one. Craig Williams (laughs) rode Bowman to clear to win the Melbourne Cup last year. Yeah. What was the name of the horse who rode his first Melbourne Cup winner on? Uh, Protectionist. No, he didn't ride a Cup winner before then. Ah, uh, you got me. you got me. Serious? Yeah, I'm, I'm serious. Who wrote protectionist? Wasn't it was a um, was it Ryan Moore? Yeah. I actually used I used that little trick on some people at Hawks Bay. You got me there. <laughs> uh, That's good. I got I'm look- no. Yeah. I was uh, I thought it was Ryan Moore who wrote protectionist anyway. Okay, in 2001, the Kiwi Mayor Ethereal was trained by who? Uh, yeah, Ryan Moore did write protectionist. Uh, Sheila Laxon, yep, very good. Great win that was. Who did she beat? Was it? Um, another New Zealand mayor, wasn't it? No, 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 a horse down on the end, slip. Uh, give the slip, was it? Give the slip, I can't remember. Horse that shot about five legs clear, yeah. I think it was called Give the Slip, yeah, very good. Okay, so we got one out of two, right? Here's one, yeah. I didn't know this. Maccabi Diva trained, um, won three Melbourne Cups. We all know that. Maccabi Diva. In 2004 and 2005, yeah. she was trained by Lee Friedman. Yeah. But in the first one, who trained her? David Hall. That damn David Hayes. It was a David Hall, was it? Yeah, pretty sure it was David Hall. 
There's a David somebody anyway, so I'll give you that one. I might be on this without anyway. Okay, very good. Two out of three. Um, here, who was the last? This is not a trick question. Who was the last Kiwi-born rider to ride a winner in the Cup and on what horse? Um, was Michelle Payne born in New Zealand? I no. think she was. She wasn't. Not her anyway. It wasn't her, but she may have been. I don't know. No. Nah. Um, well, if it wasn't Michelle Payne, probably have to go back to old the pumper, Jim Cassidy. Yeah. Modern power. Yeah, very good. Yeah, exactly right. 1997. Wow. It's a ago. few haircuts ago now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is a tough one. Mm. This is for some bonus points here. Lloyd Williams, right? He loves his Melbourne Cup. He just buys horses to win the Melbourne Yeah. Um, according to my account, he's owned six winners, six Melbourne Cup winners. Yeah. Can you name any of them? Our Mandan, Rekindling, yep. Efficient. Three. Did he own just a dash? Four. Yeah. Um, Very good. Uh, Rekindling. Turn this one out there. One that starts with W. It was actually owned with his wife, Susie. Starts with W. W. Nineteen before your time. Nineteen eighty-five. Oh, what a nuisance! That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. And there's yes. one more. Yeah, I didn't have down the, the other one, but one, okay. two, three, four, five. Yeah. Oh, very good. Okay, so I'll give you one, two, three, four out of five. There, I got you on the first question. Uh, I must chuck in those yeah. trick questions more often. <laughs> <laughs> you got me there. Yeah, uh, no, no, it's, it's an amazing race from a history point of view, and yeah. Uh, yeah, this this year will probably be the most bizarre of all races with no crowd. I mean, you just think, imagine if we said this time last year. I remember we went over to my first VRC Derby this time last year, and imagine if someone said to you, "The Melbourne Cup next year in 2020 will be run, and there'll be no people there." Yeah. You'd be like. Are you crazy? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. the world is just a very different place from 12 months ago. Yeah. You're calling the men in white coats to take you away. Yeah. That's well, they've taken us away a few times over the years. Yeah. They know us. They know us. They've got got us on first name terms now. Yeah. Yeah. And if Tim Wilkinson wins this weekend, they're taking somebody else away in a white. <laughs> Tim anyway. Wilkins. He won't be winning the golf. Don't worry about that, punters. No. Uh, good to be back. Yeah. Sorry about yeah. last week. We just had the. Get on the road up to New Plymouth pretty early, but um, it was a good freshen up. Yeah, yeah, it was good freshen up, and good luck with uh, hi, I'm Nikita, and and your other yeah, good luck with Gerda. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. and what are we next week? I'm sure we'll be around next week for a uh, another edition. Look forward to that for previewing uh, first day of Rickerton and yeah. review all what's happened in Melbourne. Yeah, no, looking forward to that. And um, everyone, make plenty of money and don't spend spend too much of it on, on yourself. Spend it on your partner or your kids or something else. Just, you know, got to spend it on something, don't you, other than yourself. So what do you do when you win? Big, you stash it away or do you buy oh. something? I normally buy something. Do you? Yeah, yeah I, I still got. I still think about my golf clubs that Phil Mickelson paid for one time. When he won the Masters, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. what's so, happened that? Is that? Ah, uh, made about four grand, I think. So I went and bought a new set of golf clubs. Well, they weren't left-handed though, so um, yeah. <laughs> nah, it's money comes and money goes, Neil. You got to just enjoy it and accept That's that. Right. Yeah. Every losing day, there'll be a you're a day closer to a winning day. So um, yeah. I should mention the BGP Punders Club that uh, Luke's running fifty thousand. Uh, you've only got till the end of today, Friday, to buy in, but go to the BGP app if you're wanting to have a share in that. It's always good fun. I think the pool will be growing and a good way to have an interest on Melbourne Cup Day. Yeah, good idea. I'll look at that too, because I think I'm involved with the selections and that. So. Yeah. 